What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York. We are backstage at Sony Hall, and today we are here with easily one of the most requested guests on this channel, Jonas of Catatonia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah. It's so great to have you here. You just released the new single, Atrium. Is this new track a good representation of what the new album, Sky Void of Stars, is going to sound like, or is there a lot more to be discovered on this album? Um, I think there's a lot more to be discovered. This is one of the more... Uh, I should say I shouldn't say simple tracks, but it's it's more um, of a um, uh, sort of easy going. So there's there's gonna be a lot more uh, in cinematic, a uh, bit more progressive stuff is gonna be on there. So there's um, there's more to find. Yes. Were you intending to just make a direct continuation of what we heard on City Burials, or is this meant to signify like a new beginning for Catatonia? It's not a new beginning. I mean, every album is uh, its own chapter, but uh, we have a style that we're comfortable with. I think the new album, to me, sounds more, uh, um, uh, I should say, live-oriented, in your face a little bit more for being Catatonia. So it's, uh, it, it's got more of the, the uh, straight emotional stuff, maybe more than the complex, but there's bits of everything in there. When it comes to every album, you know, as a fan of Catatonia, I could tell that which song would be off of Last Fear Deal, Gone Down, or what would be off The Great Cold Distance, Viva Emptiness, etc. Is it fair to say that you always like to take a new approach to every single album? Does it start off with a preconceived vision, or is it a very experimental process? It's an experimental process, but as I said earlier, we have a sound that we're, you know, we've, we've crafted it since many years, and we don't... Uh, we're not going to abandon it. Uh, so we just want to uh, sort of experiment within the frames of where we're comfortable, where, where our music is in a sweet spot, you know. So uh, we're not going to release a reggae album or, or, or something like that. It's, it has to be Catatonia. It has to be the, the dark vibe. But within that stuff, of course, there's a lot of room for experimentation, and that's what we our minds are in the beginning of the process of writing an album so there's always room for that when uh when it comes to being a vocalist of catatonia because you know with like the lyrics to tonight's music uh to tonight's music you know how could this go so very wrong i must depend on darkness like do you need to hear music before you come up with these lyrics or could a lyrical idea almost maybe help dictate the direction of the sound um i would say earlier i could write stuff uh, without having any music ready uh, because I used to write a lot of stuff back in the day but these days I tend to write more when the music is already there uh, because that's the way I, I work out melodies and stuff these days like vocal melodies and I sing along and I find the, the, the right melodies and the timing and then the words come pr pretty much in the same kind of process so it's different now from when I wrote tonight's music, for example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, when you have, when it comes to like you know expressing darkness, whether it will be the lyrics in a song like "Salt Heart" or "Tear Gas" or "Dispossession," you know, darkness is. You always know how to express pain within your music. Is is it the same type of pain explored through your whole catalog from "Dance of December Souls" to now, or does every album have its own unique form of agony that you express? I wouldn't say every album is, is unique in that sense, but uh, I mean, from when we did our first album, we were like 17 years old. Uh, so obviously it's different now. Uh, it's more exclusive, <laughs> I would say, these days. Uh, but of course, everybody is, is you know, experiencing, uh, they have dark days, and that's what Catatonia is about. We're not always uh, representing our music in our personal lives on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, we're, we're, we're people as everybody else. But when it comes to uh, doing our music, that's when the seriousness kicks in and, and that's where we want to represent the exact emotions that we have. Maybe it's been saved up for, for Catatonia because I, I just don't go around and, and burst out poetry when I'm in my home. You know, it's we save it for the creative process and that's where it all goes when you do though like because you know going back to the sound like you have a song like murder that's very you know i would say 
uh, has the more aggressive side of your vocal abilities, but then you have a song like Dispossession that's, you know, really up-tempoed but very melodic. Do you almost have, like, are you expressing a different side of who you are with the many different usages of your voice? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, lately, I, I I tend to rely on the voice that I, I use all the time these days. But, of course, going back in time, there was different voices coming from me, which all represented a certain part of our, uh, I wouldn't say career back then, but, you know, part of our progression as a band and as, as humans as well. When you have darkness as the main armature behind all your music, obviously it, it's very cathartic to write music about dark days, but when it is also the main subject matter, does it also maybe make the songwriting process a little deteriorating too? A little bit sometimes. I mean, um, there are a few uh, moments, I would say, where, where it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's very cathartic and, and maybe too much at times. Uh, but I also tend to think that's uh, a very honest way of creating. So uh, the more probably uh, real everything is, the, be the better the song becomes, I, I would say. That's like the number one word I think of when I hear catatonia. It's real. It's not like you're making a fantasy oriented of darkness. I think you, I've always said it's the macabre made beautiful. Yes, yes, definitely. I agree. Uh, there is, uh, uh, and it's been like this uh, for, for humanity for a long time. There is uh, an, an interest in death and in the darkness and, and uh, we're just part of that. I mean, we're... we're uh, we want to uh, sort of look beyond what, what's, what's next, you know. In order to get that inspiration, that creative um, energy to write lyrics or vocals or anything like that, do you need to put yourself in a specific place in order to uh, cultivate ideas or does inspiration just strike out of nowhere for you? These days, uh, I don't need to be in a certain place. Uh, I think I used to be more of that uh, earlier on. Uh, but I, I would say these days I can put myself in a catatonia m mode at pretty much any time, you know. If I sit down and think of writing music, it's going to go into that phase of, of my, where my mindset is, you know, uh, set on working on this kind of music that I do actually for a living. It's, it's my career. And I d as I don't see it as a career, you know, in the creative process, uh, it's, it's a good thing to be able to switch pretty instantly to the seriousness of it all, I would say. Do you want every album to be a snapshot of who you and Anders and everyone in Catatonia is at that particular time? Or, you know, I've always said that art is life, and when you bring it into the world, it could grow and develop and even eventually die. Do you think that maybe the music could also evolve as you evolve as an artist? Or should, you know, Last Fair Deal Gone Down remain in 2001 and, uh, you know, Viva Emptiness remain in 2003, etc.? I think they should remain there because they're, they're, they're snapshots of what we were back then. I mean, we... we constantly grow, evolve, uh, maybe uh, regress as humans. But every phase has something interesting and I want it to be up to date. Uh, so, I mean, when we play songs live from, from earlier albums, it's very easy for me to, to get into the right mindset of that particular era of the band because it's something that we've been through. Uh, but I, you know, I like every new album to be where we are in an instant yeah now i do got to ask this question for the fans because there's a lot of anniversaries in catatonia to celebrate last year was 20 years of last fear deal gone down that was my first doom metal album cool. but uh, next year is going to mark 30 years since uh the dance of december souls yeah. the debut of catatonia and also 20 years of viva emptiness just going back to time what was the sort of mindset when you as you said you were 17 years old yeah. uh what was your sort of creative mind frame with dance of december souls and how would you say it's progressed to now it's skyboard of stars i mean the progression is is huge from from these days but it's it's also a very natural thing thinking that we were pretty much kids back then and now we're adults and and it has to change somewhere along the line. Uh, we've done it in a, in a sort of a natural way, I think. But of course I can recall 
certain moments and certain feelings that we had when we did the first album. Uh, the same with, you know, Viva Emptiness or, or any album of ours. I can think of, you know, the, the person I was then, I can, th you know, just have a, a look through the lyrics and see like, oh yeah, that's the kind of feelings I was having at the time. Of course, Dance of the Summer Souls is something else because we we didn't really have experience of, of real life yet because we were so young. And it obviously it's it's the lyrical content is different. It's more fantasy, it's more um, storytelling kind of stuff. But the more we go on, the more realistic everything becomes as in, in our lives as well. So, yeah. Well, when you write something that is very fantasy oriented or something very metaphorical versus something that is rooted in experience, is your attachment towards that specific song a little bit differently or being that it is still coming from your heart and your mind, the attachment towards it is very much the same? It's it's the same because it's it's always built on a feeling, um, even the, the, the early stuff. Now, we don't really revisit that uh, very often live, so I don't have to really step into my my old self uh, from back in time that much but of course I can realize what what I was doing back then it was depending on a certain feeling or a mindset that I had at the time so even though the lyrics may say something uh, I, I will also know that my mindset was this you know but um, again we, we don't really play these songs live anymore so yeah and I have uh, two more questions for you. Actually, three, if that's okay. But um, when it comes to the songwriting, is it better if everybody in Catatonia is in the same frame of mind and is has sort of like is on the same page with songwriting, or could all of you being in your own little worlds and you know your individual experiences maybe actually help enhance what makes a Catatonia song? Yeah, I would prefer if people is in their own world because, I mean, uh, the band consists of five people. And everybody's bringing their own stuff into the band, even though maybe they didn't write the song. But so I think it's important to get the, the personal touch on everything. Uh, so and the, the way we work, we don't really jam songs in a rehearsal room. So um, usually I write the songs, I send them out. They will listen to them, add their, their personal flair and, and flavor of, of what they do. And that's Catatone. And uh, when it comes to playing live, do you, um, is there a similar energy that you channel into your live presence as you do when you're songwriting? Do you like convey that same emotion or put yourself in that same mindset? Or being that you know, you're in front of an audience, you're bringing it in front of people that maybe the mindset when you play live is a completely different creative process altogether? I think uh, live for me is more emotional even than the writing process and the recording process because um, it means the song is done, it's there, it's, it's for everyone now, not just for me or the guys in the band. And that's also when I start to realize what the lyrics are about, because I don't always realize that until afterwards. So uh, I, I would say that the, the live thing is more emotional. The thing is with those lyrics, as you mentioned, like tonight's music, it's like, you know, when I, being the goth, you know, angry metal kid, my mom would always ask, Oi vey, where did I go wrong? Yeah. And, and I asked, how did it go so very wrong that I must depend on darkness? And I think, really, you create something that lets, uh, I don't think your music is about conquering demons or escaping demons. I think it's almost finding peace with demons. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, definitely. I mean, that's... Uh I think that's the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah. Of Just submit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think somebody else's interpretation of your music could bring another layer of context to it, or does that, or you don't think about that, and you just very much feel the same way about the song when you finished it at first hand? I think when when people explain to me what the, our songs mean to them, it's it's always a different thing, which I think is a, is a quality because I don't want to say like, oh, you're wrong. It's not about that, but because it's. The lyric is just my interpretation of a, of a certain feeling or, or a something. And when it's out there for an, anybody to, to have it and, and listen to it and, and embrace it, it's going to have you know, thousands of interpretations. And I think that's the beautiful part. Mm -hmm. So it's much more interesting that way. 
How do you know when you're finished with a song? Uh, that's hard because I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Uh, I don't really like to say it's finished. But it's uh, when the lyrics are finished. Okay. It's, it's done. That's a fair way to put it. And, yeah. uh, and, um, and also, when you are working on a song for a long period of time, uh, you know, sometimes days or weeks, is it harder to sort of like maintain that emotion or that creative uh, inspiration when you first started it? Do you kind of like to finish the same, w feel the same way when you finish a song as you do when you start it? Uh, it could be, but I have a trick for, for um, conquering that. And it is, if I start feeling a little bit like, if I have an idea that I really like, and I work on it, and I work on it, and, and uh, after a while maybe it feels like, I'm not sure if it's good enough any longer. Uh, but then I put it away, I start with something new. And when I go back to that, I will realize if it's good or not. So uh, That's incredible. I've never understood how like an artist could put something away and come back to no, it yeah. later. I, I've, I've learned through the years. Because earlier on, I would try and finish everything at once. But now I've realized for me it works better if I, you know, forget it for a while, two weeks, and, and then listen to it again. And if I go like, wow, this is so good, I've forgotten. Or if I think this has to go in the trash, you know, so. You would think it would be the opposite. Like when you're, when you're young, you want to, um, you know, you think you have all the time in the world yeah. and that, you, you know, you could come back to it any time you want. And when you're older, time is short, you want to finish it. But yeah. it, it's the complete opposite. It is for me. Yeah, it yeah. works for me. Yeah. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Such a great conversation. Is there just um, anything else with Catatonia with the release of uh, Sky Void of Stars in terms of you have this new single Atrium out? Yeah. Uh, could we be expecting anything else from Catatonia that you're allowed to say of course yeah there's gonna be another single this month i think or uh maybe earlier early next month i i don't know the exact release date uh but we, we need to play it on this tour at least so we're still on the tour when the, the next single comes out so that's interesting yeah can't wait to hear it. And happy uh, 30 years to Dance of December Souls. Yeah. Happy 20 years to Viva Emptiness. And happy 10 years to Dead End Kings. Oh, it is, yeah. A lot of so celebration going on. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully we could get some deep cuts. I know you have your fans. I want like that one bonus track from like the demo back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's always stuff to uh, find, you know. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. Just yeah. do the whole catalog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very yeah, much. Of course. Everybody, we are here with Catatonia. Check out their new single, Atrium, off of their new upcoming album, Skyboard of Stars. We will see you next time on Heavy New York.